Hey guys, welcome to the X-Ring. On today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go old school and we're going to go with rifles that are near and dear to my heart, the ones that actually gave us the freedoms that we have today and what we can enjoy today. So I'll start off this first video by doing a 1903. Okay, so this is a bolt action rifle. It was actually used in the service in 1903 is when these started coming into, uh, into existence. And uh, I'll explain a little bit about it. It was based off of a Mauser action. And you guys can see right here, it is a Rock Island, which is Springfield Armory. It is a lower serial number, but not so low that I need to be concerned with the single heat treat. Okay, so guys, if you have one of these and you see the video and you want to shoot your grandpa's rifle or something that you acquired, make sure you know that serial number range, because anything less than about 200,000, mid 200,000 had a single heat treat, and those guns are what we call collectors. You don't shoot those, okay? This right here is a collector as well, but it's one that I know this is going to be safe to shoot had a double heat treat done to it, but great, great rifle. We'll just start getting into the basics, starting from the rear up to the front. So on the butt stock here, you're gonna see you've got a little place there. It's got a little cleaning kit, a um, little bit of grease and whatnot. It's actually still in here. This is a perfect example of one. Uh, it's in great shape, has all the proper cartouches. Um, this right here is gonna be your, your cocking mechanism, or your firing pin. You can actually do that manually if you wanted to, but of course, when you work the action, it's going to cock it as well, just like that. Now, once it's cocked, you've got this right here, this little tab, you'll see that it says ready on there. So it is ready to fire. If I go to this position in the middle, what I'll be able to do is work the bolt, but it's still technically safe. If I go far right, where you guys see that it says safe, now I can't even lift it, I can't work the action or anything. So that's what this does, it's uh, ready to fire. Now, you also have this switch on the side here, it's on the left side. Right now it's in the up position. In the up position, it allows me to go to the bolt to the rear, but I can't go back forwards because I'm out of ammunition. So I'm gonna press down on that with my thumb. I'll move it forwards. If I go to the middle position, now when I rack it, the bolt will actually come out like that. And you guys can see it is based off of that Mauser action. So I'm gonna reinsert that, and then I'm gonna put it in the down position. The down position won't give me a full stroke on it. You see how it last round doesn't basically lift the lifter up there, or the follower. So the proper position is gonna be in the up position like that. Moving forward, you guys are gonna see this nice, beautiful leaf sight. Uh, you use the notch here for your normal shooting, but it does have a leaf sight that you could lift like this. And for further engagements, now it's marked all the way out to about 3,000. Uh, that'd be a far shot, but we're not doing that today. All I have is uh, steel core ammunition, so I'm, I'm really gonna shoot it on paper. Uh, but the way this works is you have a, a wheel here and you can actually lift this for your yardages. You just place that yardage on there and get it locked in. You also have a little tiny peep inside of there with an aperture, you guys can see it, that's what you would use, okay? Now, your windage adjustments are controlled by this knob here. When I move this, that will actually swing this and you have some index marks right here so you kind of know where your zero is. I'm just gonna keep working my way over. You've got a hooded front sight with a bayonet attachment. <clears throat> This one does have the Springfield Armory barrel. I don't know if you guys can see that or if it'll focus on it. Um, this barrel is a 1927 barrel. This rifle was made, I believe, in 1909. It does have the RA Frank J. Atwood for where this was uh, basically refurbished. Um, it does have the cartouches here and then the Circle P. So a lot of history, great history with these rifles. Uh, we're going to shoot it and see how it does. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so only the best for my viewers. I wanted to get this on camera because you don't really do what I'm getting ready to do. Guys, this is 20 cartridges of 30 cal match. It is the M72. It is 173 grain, 30-06 ammunition. This is from the Lake City Ordnance uh, plant from 1962. This is great ammunition. This has a lot of collectability, but... Uh, this is what I want to shoot today. I'm going to shoot it in this, and I'll probably shoot it in the Garand and all that when I do these series on older rifles. It's going to kill me to open this, but uh, you know what? Only the best for my viewers. So this is what we're going to shoot today. Let's go ahead and get this opened up. And peel that top off just like that. And there it is. And then I'll show you one of the rounds. It's old school, 1962, guys. 30-06. That's what we'll be shooting today. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and do this old-fashioned. We'll just do it in the seated position. 
Um, we've got a sling here, and let me show you how this sling works for the seated position. So for these slings right here, these are unbelievable slings, but you've got these brass paws that look like this, okay? Uh, basically, you unhook the one, and then you've got different indicators here, and then I've got a keeper here. So if I want to shoot this in the shooting position, what I want to do is hold the strap, rotate it once towards me, towards the sling, towards me. You want to get it above the bicep, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that keeper down, and so now I can take my hand and wrap it underneath. And you guys are going to see how everything lays very, very flat, just like that. This doesn't have to be attached. This you can unhook and just let it hang or whatever. But that's going to give me the support I need. Once again, just like positional shooting with these higher power rifles. And guys, shooting rifles like this and growing up shooting these is what I attribute my, I wouldn't say good marksmanship, but decent marksmanship skills to. Uh, just remember the basics, no bone-on-bone -bone contact. You want to get in a good position. You want to relax this left hand, and we're going to squeeze it just like any other trigger. So, all right, so we've got a target at 100 yards. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. I'm going to use the rear peep, and let me grab one of these rounds here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and insert it into the magazine there so you guys can see it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and chamber around just like that, and we are ready to go. So... Yeah, it's been a long time since these guns have been shot. Hopefully I'm not filming my death here, but um, I feel confident with this rifle. So we'll go 100 yards on the paper. Very, very soft shooting rifle for a 30 out six. It's not like your hunting rifles where they kick you. Uh, these things have a lot of weight to them but they just fire so soft, so well, and there's a piece of that brass. So let's go check out the target and see what so we have. the first shot at 100 yards. You can see we're a little bit left, so I need to do a uh, windage adjustment on that. Elevation looks pretty good. I'm not gonna mess with, uh, with trying to lower that side anymore, uh, but we'll go ahead and see what kind of group we can get. There's your first shot out of that 1903 Rock Island. All right, guys, so before we get to shooting, let me explain how these sights work. So on this leaf sight, You've got this notch here. Now, this is not the one you want to use because that's a battle zero. That's a battle sight, and that's zeroed out to about 500 yards or so if you use this one. Uh, but you've got this lower peep right here, and you can you guys can see the indicators there. Right now, it's set on 100 and then 200 off to the left. Um, it just keeps working its way back and forth all the way up to about 2,850 yards. But when you lift this, you'll also see that there is another U-notch right there as well as another U-notch right there at the top. I don't know if you guys can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the peep. We'll try to get this thing zeroed at 100 yards, and we'll check it for windage, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so let's learn a little something. We know that our impact was to the left about 5 inches. Now, each one of these hash marks on the windage here indicates about 4.5 inches of movement at 100 yards. So what I want to do is move at a hash mark. Remember this. Move the rear sight in the direction you'd like the bullet to go. So we want this bullet to go to the right. So I need to move the rear sight to the right. So I'm gonna take this windage knob and I wanna start rotating it. And you see that it's moving that. And I'm gonna go one hash mark because we were approximately five inches to the left. So now I've moved that. You guys can see it right there if it'll focus. So I've moved it one hash mark right. So let's see what that does right, for guys, us. So we'll try it again, 100 yards. Let me go ahead and put a round in there. All right, 100 yards on the leaf. Let's see what we get on this. <laughs> Felt pretty clean. Let's go check it out. What I'm seeing. Almost in the X ring. So, guys, just because it's an older rifle doesn't mean it won't shoot. Uh, we'll do a couple more shots and then we'll go and uh, hit some steel with this and see how it does. All right, guys, so I was getting a little too much tension on my, uh, my arm. It wasn't quite long enough, so I released it another notch. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We'll put this cuff on, we'll get it tight. It's good enough for me. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and do, uh, we know that it's pretty zeroed now. So, there's round one. There's two, and there's three. We'll do a three-shot group. Um, it could probably go a hair right, but I'm good with what it is. And here we go at 100 yards.
All right, guys, three shot group. We'll go check it out. We'll see what we get. All right, guys, so keep in mind, this is a 109 year old rifle, okay? I mean, that's crazy when you think about it. Still able to hold the black using that rifle. You guys could see that was the first cider shot. Then we made the adjustment got one in the x-ring so we're good there and then we've got two off to the side but come on guys i mean it's holding literally a four inch group at 100 yards gotta love these rifles it's what forged our freedoms in our country today so what i'll do next is i'll review an m1 garand coming up soon that's something that really changed the face of this nation we'll talk to you soon i hope you guys have a great thanksgiving thanks for watching and thanks for all the support take care all right, guys, so I promised you I'd shoot some steel, so let's see what this 30 out 6 will do on that big old far steel there. It's 100 yards, so we'll go ahead and load a round into this. Hoping you guys can see that from the camera angle. All right, let's see if we can pop that round steel. Here we go, 100 yards. Look at that thing swinging. One shot, one hit. That's how you I'm do it. I'll show you the steel. This is the steel at 100 yards. That is a hand width steel right there. And you guys can actually see that impact right here. Uh, it's a good solid impact. And I had it zoomed in. You know, I'm gonna have those viewers that say, that wasn't 100 yards. Okay, so I had it zoomed in, but if you guys look past the Ranger, that's where I was shooting, okay? Back there in the woods. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you soon.